Let's decorate a binder junk journal style. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So I recently made a video showing you my new stamp storage system. If you've missed that and want to see how I came up with this solution, and I have two of these, by the way, I have one for clear stamps and I have one for the rubber mounted stamps. You can check out the video in the playlist below. But this is still looking quite plain for me. So I want to decorate this junk journal style. And of course, you can use this method also for decorating any kind of hardcover junk journal. So I want to start off with a base layer here. And for that, I'm going to take some tissue wrap. This is the Tim Holtz Ideology Tissue Wrap Melange. If you don't have any of this kind of tissue wrap, another good option would be using napkins as a background. Or taking plain tissue paper or packaging paper or the white layer of the napkin and stamping on that. That would work just as well. I do need to be careful about these here. Let me first tear down the height. I actually like it better like this here. So now I'm wondering, should I just have it go up to here or should I cut out the holes? Maybe that could look interesting as well. I'm going to cut out the holes. So I'm going to kind of trace around them. Then I'm going to poke a hole in here and tear out that oval. Obviously I could cut it with my X-Acto knife, but I'm not looking for precision. I want junk journal style messiness. <laughs> this tissue paper is not the easiest to tear because I think it has some sort of coating on it to make it feel a bit waxy, which makes it harder to tear. See how this looks. Okay, they're not wide enough. Okay, that's going to work for me. I'm going to adhere this with Liquitex Matte Gel. I was debating whether to use a glossy medium for this because the cover is glossy. But since I want to add some more media on top, I would rather stick with the matte. So I'm just going to add the matte gel all over my front cover. Then let's add the tissue paper on top. And add another coat of matte medium. I quickly dried this with my heat gun. And next I want to think about what focal point can I add? One of my favorite focal points to add are birds. I have this beautiful book here, which is also available in English. I will link it for you both from amazon.com and Amazon Germany. So an English and a German version. And it has the most beautiful birds in here. And the cool thing about these birds, which is not relevant for what I'm doing today, but there's always two, there's always the front and the back of the same bird. So this book is actually meant to make kind of like an art project out of it like this. So you just take out the birds on the top and you will still have the description and the name of the bird on the bottom. And you can stand up the book like this, which is a really adorable idea but it's not what I'm using it for. I chose this bird for my cover. He's called a Kaiserreia in German or in English, an Emperor Heron. And the reason why I want to use him is because I run across herons, not this specific type, but other beautiful herons on my walks in the new area where I live now, down by the Vienna River. I showed you some footage of that recently in my vlog. I will show you here 
what I managed to film. So this is the one I want to use. Now for the top part, I can just break him out. Like that. And I will just fussy cut the rest and I'm also going to cut away these little parts here that are left from tearing him out. You see these? You could also just file these down. I've done that as well. So this is what our heron looks like once I have fussy cut him. And now the cool thing is I can use him facing either direction. I think I want him facing this way. And then to add another fun element, I want to add one of these sitting paper dolls. I have received these from lovely Terry. Thank you so much again, Terry. And the plan was for me to make a whole journal with sitting paper dolls on animals, like I'm doing here on the cover. Louisa Heinzel came up with that idea last December, so the December daily, last December 2021. And I have not made that. So it's been almost a year. I haven't done it. So I'm thinking I could at least make a cover with this concept. <laughs> I have already identified four candidates that might work here. So let's just audition them and see which one might work best. We have this little guy here who would definitely work, but in my eyes, he's too small. We have this little girl who's definitely a lot bigger and she would be okay. I think if I would use her, I would turn him around just because of the way she's sitting. I think it looks more natural if she would sit this way. I don't think it's the perfect option. And then we have these two gentlemen. I rarely use men. I enjoy using women more, to be honest. But I think either of these would make great candidates for our Emperor Heron. That's what he would look like. Totally love it. And then we have this one here, which I also totally love. And I'm going to choose him. He looks so comfortable on that heron, like he's really meant to sit there. So he is my choice. So these two are going to basically be the safe keepers of my stamps in this binder. <laughs> So at the moment, he is the only one that is shiny. The bird is matte, our cover is matte. We could either use that to our advantage and say, okay, he is the one that stands out most because he's shiny. Then I would probably even increase the shine by using clear embossing powder or embossing glaze on him to make it really seem like that was our intention. Or the other option is, and that's what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cover him in the matte gel so that everything is the same. Another thing I want to do is I want to warm up the tone because this is quite cold at the moment. I want to add some Distress Ink Tea Dye with a flat makeup brush. And this will now work well because of the matte gel. If I would have put this on without putting the matte gel, then it would have rubbed right off because of the smooth surface. Now, obviously this doesn't stand out a whole lot because we have dark on dark. So let's change that by adding some more elements to the background. I have my acrylic box of neutral scraps here. So I'm going to be pulling from those and adding some bits to this background and gluing them down with my matte gel. And I'm especially going to concentrate on this middle area, which is the part I want to lighten up. So I'm just going to tear some scraps and add them. And I'm looking to have a variety of papers with a variety of different scripts and colors. I'm sticking to vertical and horizontal positioning 
and I'm always positioning them so that they overlap but that they give me an interesting edge on the outside without having any of the pieces meet up at the same point. I'm also keeping in mind the shape of my focal point. So if I put him here, first of all, I can see that he is much more visible on this light background. And second of all, I can also see that I want to add some more here and here on the bottom. Okay, let's check again if this would work. I want to add something else here, just a small piece. I also want to extend it out here a little bit. And if I have a torn edge and a straight edge and I'm too lazy to tear this edge, <laughs> then I always put the, the straight edge on the inside so that I have this rough edge on the outside. Here I actually had a straight edge and a torn edge and this is on the outside, but where I can, I, I do that. And actually it, it does look nice when you have it mixed up. You have torn edges and straight edges. And I think I also want to add a little bit here and maybe even something else up here. It's also nice to change the direction of your script. Here this way is up and here this way is up. So this one I again am going to have facing to the top. Okay, let's see, how would this look now? So they definitely stand out really well. But now I also want to add some lighter parts around the edges because I think it looks strange if it's just like this in the middle. It doesn't seem balanced to me. So I'm going to take these off for now. And I'm going to add some texture paste opaque crackle. This is Ranger. I will do my best to link this for you below as well. But what you could also use, would, what I've also done in the past, is just mix white gesso either with baby powder or with very fine sand. You obviously won't get the crackling effect, but you have a beautiful paste which you can then put through stencils, for example. I'm going to once more use my favorite stencil, which is a grunge mask by Studio Light. <laughs> it's always the same one. SLGR mask 16. I will do my best to link it. As far as I know, the Studio Lights shop in the Netherlands, I think is sold out at the moment. I think all of my viewers bought the stencil, <laughs> but I will link this anyway, even though it probably will say out of stock when you try it, but that way you have all the details for the stencil and you can most likely find it in another online store, which is closer to you. So I'm going to add this specifically to the edges, but not only probably. So I'm just scraping this through and I'm making sure that I am scraping along the stencil so that I don't have any lumps. I don't want this to get too dimensional. Ooh, loving that. So I'll start with all four corners and they don't all have to be facing the same way. And I also don't want to go over this part right here because this is the part that opens. And if I would put the crackling paste over that, over time, it would probably come off. I'm just going to wipe off whatever I got on the edge there. Okay, one more corner to go. And now I see that I also want to add some in the areas around the scrap collaging. Not too much, but just a few accents. Now I see I have like this circle here, which I don't want. I want to break that up. So I'm just going to continue to add more crackle paste to break that up.
Okay, I think that's good. So now this needs to dry. It's about two hours later. I let this air dry. You can see how beautifully it has crackled. And because this is a cover and it will more likely be banged up a little more than a journaling page, I'm going to again cover this with matte medium to make sure that the crackling paste does not come off over time. It's again a few hours later and this is completely dry. So I can now continue and I want to add a bit of color to it. I have chosen these three distress stains, tumbled glass, wild honey, and brushed corduroy. You can use any kind of media that is water soluble. And depending on what you use, you just apply some of it either with a brush or maybe you have water soluble wax pastels, then you can add them directly to your surface. And then you just use a water spray bottle to distribute the color. I will start off with the wild honey. So these are the daubers. I don't think these are available anymore. And just to make sure that I don't mess up my stamps, I did take them out now. Especially close to where my focal point is, I want to keep it light. And I'm going to use my water spray bottle to spread this around a little bit and to move it. I do have a paper towel ready because this is really liquid now and it's going to run everywhere. Good thing I took my stamps out. <laughs> it already dripped inside. Maybe it's a good idea to dry this first before I continue with another color. Okay, so I've dried it and I've added some kitchen towel underneath here to soak up anything that <laughs> goes in this area. So next, let's try some, mm, no, actually, let's try some brushed corduroy. And I think I want to keep this closer to the edge. Why is this green? That's not what I want. Okay, let's spray this and try to get rid of this. Why is it green? Since when is brushed corduroy green? That's more like it. No idea why it was doing the green before. So let's add some of this here. It's not much darker than the yellow. It does give a bit of variety. Actually looks green in the camera, doesn't it? <laughs> and I'm going to just use a little bit of water this time. I don't want this going all over the place like I had with the yellow. Oh, well, now it turned green again. Okay, I understand that it turns green where the yellow is. I did not want green whatsoever. So I'm going to actually dab this off again. No problem, we will use something else. Instead, I'm going to use this eye zinc dye spray in the color coffee. This is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to maybe not spray it, but maybe just use some of it like this. Because I don't want to go overboard with this because this is quite dark and I'm not putting it in the middle where our dark focal points are. So let's add a little bit of water. Oh, go overboard and let that run a little bit. Again, I will dry this with my heat gun. Once that is dry, I'm going to use my tumbled glass distress stain, which, oops, <laughs> might have to take the lid off. This is a beautiful blue and I'm worried that this is going to turn green on the yellow. I'll add a little bit of water. Let 
let's let this run just a little bit well here it's green already i'm going to dry this and then we'll see what it looks like so after drying there's not much left of the blue so i want to add some more of it so i'm going to take my acrylic paint in jade green thin that down with some water and do some splattering And I'm back after some more drying time. So now I have my blue here. I let that mostly air dry. I did use my heat gun after about two hours or so just for the bigger splatters here. So let's see what it looks like when we add our focal point. I am quite happy with that. So I think I'm ready to commit to gluing these down. Another touch I absolutely have to add because the Heron is not a normal Heron. He's an emperor Heron. And emperors, obviously, yes, they need a crown. <laughs> so I have some chocolate foil here. It's not my preferred gold color. It's more bronze looking, but it is what I have at the moment. So I'm going to go with that. So let's make a crown. So I'll just cut a piece off. I'm not sure how high do I want it to be. Let's see the width looks good. And I'll just cut some, whoops, some spikes. I don't want them to be the same height and I want them to be wonky. Maybe we can make four. No, I think we can only do three. And then we need to curve this part down here because otherwise it's going to look very strange on his head. Let's give it a try. You know, it's yellow on yellow. In the camera, you can hardly see it, but in real, it really stands out because it's orange, not yellow. It's interesting how the camera is changing that color. And since I want to keep the shine of the crown, I'm not adhering it with matte medium. I just put glue on the back side. Ah, oh, there, now you can see the color properly. I also want the heron to have some ground to stand on. And I have this jelly plate print. And I think this part right here with the turquoise and light blue might be a nice addition. So I'm just going to tear out a scrap. I should have obviously thought about this before, but I want to see if maybe I can still lift the Heron's feet a little bit so that I can put the ground underneath. Success! Thankfully, the cardboard on which the Heron is quite thick. I think with the regular paper that would not have worked. So that's great. So I'll just glue that down. And then I'll re-glue his feet. And then I'm going to add more splatters. So I'm going to protect both of their faces. And I'm using the same jade green. Then I also want to add some darker splatters down here where the ground and his feet are. And even though the brown is not as dark in real as it is on camera, it is still a bit dark. So I'm going to take a wet baby wipe and take some of it off to make it lighter. That's the good thing about having water-soluble mediums. And I think this works a lot better because I have the matte gel on top. And lastly, I want to add a sentiment. 
I'm using one from the Fortune Teller sticker set from Seven Dot Studio. I like the professional dreamer for this one because he looks like a professional dreamer and also because my full-time job is making junk journals and digitals. So in that sense, I would also call myself a professional dreamer because I get to dream up all these beautiful things professionally, <laughs> if you get what I mean. <laughs> I'm just eating up the edges with, vin no, with walnut stain. And then I'll add some glue to the back and then we'll find the perfect spot for it. And I think that place is, as always, on the bottom right, right in this little nook here. So there's my very busy stamp album cover, but it will make me happy every time I take out my stamps. <laughs> Some of you mentioned in the comments of the video where I organized these stamps. Again, you can find that link below. Two things. First of all, that you would have added the stamps to the back side and added these cutouts to the front. Totally makes sense. <laughs> For me, it just seemed weird to adhere the stamps to the bottom side, but I see where you're coming from and yes, it would have made sense, but I'm happy with it like this because I don't mind turning it around. It's really not, a, not an issue. And then another comment that I got multiple times is to put dividers in between here so that I can see the stamps better, which is also a valid point. But on the other hand, I think I know my stamps well enough to be able to see them just fine like this without having dividers in them so I think I'm okay keeping them like this but I will keep your suggestion in mind in case I have a feeling I don't see them well enough so you do what works for you so far this is working for me I'm super happy with it and this can now go back on my shelf love you guys Mwah! Mwah! <laughs>